a wolf coming in with the oh hi mark as top comment top first comment all right let's just get right into it i'm actually starting on time oh my god i guess my voice was like nope not quite on time not before we get snatched out your chest yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm still waiting for a chat box to, to start populating. Usually takes a couple seconds into the stream. But if you would like to appear here, chat box, you can. Once it does. I, uh, I taught my dog a new trick. If you guys want to see my dog's new trick before we get started today. Chat box, what is you doing? Persona reveal stream. No one drew my persona yet, you guys. <laughs> chat box. Ooh, eh, la. Man, this might be a stream with an invisible chat box today. That's extremely depressing. I'm still reading all of your chats. What up, Lord Bone? What up, Rook? But I think it's because I chose not to update OBS. That could be. I had some other issues that I had to like work out, but apparently Chatbox is like, no. All right, real quick. Before we do anything, you have to see my dog's new trick. One sec. Release the hounds. Parker Miles. Lift this up just a little bit. Parker. All right, Parker, you get a treat just for being 10. You get the old man treat. Now go on. Parker, go on. We need room. All right. How can I angle this so you can see the my Mai Miles, come here. I'm not done with you yet. Go over here, Miles. All right, sit. You can't see this, but I promise he's doing it. Shake. Oh, good boys, you see the shake. All right, ready? Hugs. Oh, you good baby. Who's giving me the big hugs? Isn't he such a good boy? <laughs> good hugs, Smiles. Good hugs. Okay, you can go down now. Good, <laughs> good Miles. Here you go. Okay, go on. Good boys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for spamming the Miles and Parker emotes. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah that's his new treat i taught him hugs it's where a gigantic 80 pound mastiff doberman rottweiler husky chow chow staffy pitbull golden uh german shepherd belgian malinois mix uh hugs a four foot eleven girl it's great <laughs> it's a great trick <laughs> anyway let me kind of lift this up a little bit too high now it's too high Got it, got to get it just right. I keep thinking Miles is freakishly tall, but then I remember Lauren is short. Very small. Now I have like a little driblet of mallet drool on my shirt. It's okay. It's, it's Miles Mark. Now he's with us all the time. <laughs> oh, what up, Kalamazoo? We're, uh, we're pretty close. Pretty close. Y'all know I'm a, a Michigander, a Michiganian. <laughs> Dang, a lot of dogs banged to make that beast. For real, dude. If I had to describe my dog Miles as a combination of cartoon slash fictional um, CGI characters, I would say that my dog Miles is a blend between Devil Dinosaur from Moon Girl and Donkey from Shrek. That is his personality and general disposition. He even sounds like Devil Dinosaur. He's always like, rrr, rrr. very guttural. Wow, okay, we already hit 100 messages and it's been like up for like two minutes. Holy cow. And no one can see any of the messages because chat is failing. I wish I could show you guys. That's program just as usual, but invisible chat today. I'm so sorry. Hopefully the alerts still work. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I apologize. Let me, I'm going to hit refresh on alerts and see if that helps. But all right, I say let's get right into it with the story of the day. Let's go ahead and load her up. If you didn't see the thumbnail, if you don't even know what you just clicked into, uh, we're going to start off the stream today by covering a situation where a man encountered quite an event in his life. I think that a lot of you by now are familiar with the culture, typically at gyms, in which any time that a man may happen to look upon the body of a woman and it's recorded, not great things are going to happen to him online. Most likely he's going to be accused of being a creep, a perv, a predator, all because he dared look at somebody. It, it reminds me of like when my daughter was in kindergarten and all the kids would tell on each other for because they were looking at each other. Like, She's looking at me. I don't care. That is not a crime. Stop it. But they're in kindergarten so they're forgivable because they're they're dumb. But like when it's full grown big aged humans it's a lot more embarrassing, especially when you find out that the reason that the video was curated, we'll just get right into it. I'll just show you. I'll just show you what's happening. All right. Happened to a friend of mine really just ruins your life. It, yep, that's what I'm saying. These, these things are, it's not a small deal, right? So, all right. Let, let's take an, uh, an adventure here. So a couple of months ago, I was at work doing my job, you know, do, giving out excellent customer service per me, and, and this girl walks up, and she's t I tell me she's a speaker, but she, the way she's talking is very, like, it's different. She's being very inappropriate with me. She's talking like this, and it just makes me uncomfortable, but I'm like, let me just try to do my job, you know, whatever. And then as I'm trying to help her with the speaker, I don't know if you're hearing the thing, but I was telling her we could look at reviews online. She bends down to point at something, and I, her bottom of her dress is cut, and I just see her entire fucking ass. Keep in mind, side note, I am gay. I am gay, wrong tree in the wrong neighborhood, wrong fucking area code, like, no, no thank you. Um, and it kills me because this happens and I'm like, whatever, you know, I tell my my leadership and, you know, whatever. Months later, around Christmas, guy comes to my job, you look familiar. And I'm thinking, oh, it's probably because I worked at two other locations in three years. No, OnlyFans. She put this shit on OnlyFans and... <laughs> I like freak the fuck out because like I'm like oh my god so I had to hunt it down he comes back gives me her at I find the video description of the video unsubscribed version on my page for four dollars the killer her bio minding my business girl no you ain't because look at where we are right now look at look at me just potentially could be recognized in this video that makes it like a pervert for the rest of my life and you don't even care here here I am having that DoorDash shake and meet and this girl's living in Miami living her best life. That's right. This girl is, she's basically ambushing what I'm assuming to be very likely either minimum wage or very close to minimum wage employees at their place of employment. And I'm sure that you know, all of us have uh, assumedly worked a job. You're in a very vulnerable position when you're at work. You're in corporate mode, and not only that, but you're you're in a position where you, you don't want to lose your job, and so you are most likely going to deal with a lot more bullshit than you ordinarily would. It's It really is one of the shittiest things that you can do to a person. If you have beef with someone, or if you're trying to start crap with someone, or you want to mess with someone, you don't go to their job that is so 
low. I'll, I'll hear about this sometimes when someone wants to, you know, go confront their boyfriend or something and they do it at work. I don't care what this person did to you. I really don't. Taking it to their place of employment is putting yourself in such a position of power over them. It is just not fair. Like, to give you an idea of how much more bullshit we deal with, this is such a crazy thing. So, I don't know if any of you remember when this video went viral, but there was a viral story sometime around last year where a woman did not like that a man had his emotional support dog with him at a supermarket. And so, she literally, like, went up and kicked the guy in his ass for having a dog. Just an old woman, like, literally just shoves her foot literally in his butt crack. And the story blew up because he ended up calling the police and having her arrested. And I remember having a conversation with my husband and being like, oh, I don't care that she's an old lady. I would, I would 100% also get that lady arrested if she just came up and kicked me in my butt unprovoked. That's so messed up. Then, three days after this conversation, I was at my job at the time, just standing there, existing, when all of a sudden, uh, apparently someone needed my attention and I had not seen them, a man just walks up and just strikes me in the leg with a cane, with his cane. Old man, cane, my leg, whack. It's on the security footage and everything. You just see him walk up from behind me and just like try to take out my legs like he's a Grand Theft Auto boss or some shit. And you want to know what I did? After just having this long tangential conversation with my husband talking about some, I don't care if they're an old lady, I'm a big tough guy. You know what my dumb ass did? I go... I'm sorry, do you need something? I don't know why. Y'all, I don't... I don't know. All I, And I remember everything was moving in slow motion. I remember, like, I was saying to myself as I was reacting, one part of me, there was, there was good Kronk and bad Kronk, and honestly, it was good Kronk who was like, Make a scene, Lauren. Just start screaming. Just start telling everybody what this motherfucker did. Literally just say as loud as you can, you just hit me with your cane. Do it. Do that. And then bad Kronk, like co corporate brainwashed Kronk, was like, no, Lauren, like you need to provide for your family and you don't want to get fired. So like, just handle this as best you can. Like, I, like we are in the same position. I was physically assaulted. He was sexually assaulted. Neither are okay. And yet in both of these situations, like because of the position of power that they have over us, because we're in such a vulnerable, like I cannot lose this job position. We just dealt with it. And, and the reality of the situation is in his case, I can have life, long effects on his reputation. The dude got recognized. In my case, he doesn't know what's going on in my life. I could have bone cancer and that could be the end of my leg as we know it. Okay? Yes, that's the most dramatic outcome, but I think it's fair to be a little bit dramatic when you get assaulted with a cane at your job. <laughs> so yeah, I did end up um, filing a report though. I will, I will say that at least against mine. And I don't fully know the outcome of this. I tried to do a little bit of research on Pretty Onya or whatever her name is to see if she ended up removing her video or whatever. I couldn't find it and I, I'm not really in the business of like scouring OnlyFans to do my research, if you know what I mean. I, I just kind of let that lie. But the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because this is a very pervasive trend that I'm starting to notice. Now, I, I really do 
try to be a very sex positive, open minded person. I, I definitely don't think that OnlyFans should be illegal. I think that everybody should absolutely have the right to engage in that service if they would like, right? But where am I respect for the marketing of these models starts to diminish is the the way in which OnlyFans models seem to be promoting themselves seems to be through almost exclusively at this point either rage bait or controversy or somehow just playing on the heightened anxiety or negative emotions that come from social media. So what I'm noticing that this is starting to look like is people will often stage things like, oh, I'm cheating on my husband and I don't care. Whenever you see stuff like that, if you go to the bio, I guarantee you, you're gonna see a chili pe pepper with a link right there waiting for you. And they're just, the, the stakes are getting crazier and crazier. It's getting worse and worse. And typically, it's it's just a little annoying. You're just kind of like, okay, you're obviously farming drama to get clicks on your business page. But now, you're going to places of employment, causing a scene and using unwitting participants for your marketing campaigns. Surely this has got to have some realm of illegality, right? Like, surely? I know why chat's not showing up. There we go. So, <laughs> squirrel brain fixed a problem while in the middle of, of ranting. But hey, got the chat box back. What up, chat? I... I... I vehemently am opposed to this strategy it, and I, and we're starting to see it with a lot of different channels like not just only fans well then I might move this over we are seeing it with like the prank channels I don't know if you've heard of this woman who's going into Walmart and pretty much her whole channel is going into Walmart and similar businesses and wrecking the place, just trashing the place while filming herself and then laughing at and trolling the employees whose jobs are now made 100 times harder by these antics. So we have the annoying aspect, we have the reputational damaging aspect now let's talk about the fact that you're taking away the credibility of real victims when you make up claims that you're being harassed for clout and attention. You're making it worse for people who actually have these issues all so that you can promote sexual imagery. It's, it's a really, it's the whole thing is so messed up because essentially she is stepping on some of the most vulnerable, most disenfranchised communities to desperately attempt to climb her way to the top of the OnlyFans ladder. And I'm sorry, like, you're, you're very hard-pressed to get my support in using and manipulating innocent laborers, innocent white and blue-collar workers and victims to get to the end of your means, but you're sure as hell gonna lose me if the end goal is to be the most successful webcam model. Are you, are you kidding me? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm chaotic and neutral enough to where if you told me that you had a really 
good end goal. One that, you know, we might break a couple eggs, but ultimately we're gonna make more omelets for everyone than the world has ever seen. You might be able to get me with you, right? If you were like, yeah, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna film these embarrassing videos, but it's ultimately gonna get this entire business that's been having behind the scenes, ill-fated practices, and we're gonna get them shut down because of this, then you know what? It's a stretch, but you might be able to get me. But you're making false allegations against a minority gay male who is all right. I'm sure I am 100% positive that that man has faced enough bullying. I already know, right? You as a gay man in America, the odds of you going unbullied are very low. But to have it persist in such in such a like self-serving like just all okay, all bullying is unnecessary. But but to promote your OnlyFans. Sorry, I'm going to read some of these comments. I I was going off for a minute there. This one, this one absolutely threw me off. And it just, it's disturbing because it really makes you wonder how many other people this is happening to. There, It's such an awful, gut-wrenching feeling to, to know. Like, we... I think enough of us already experience the Sunday scaries, which is the night before you have to go back to work, that anxiety and dread that kind of bubbles up in your tummy of like, oh God, I don't want to work. And sometimes it can snowball to like ruin the entire night or day before you go back to work because some of us hate our jobs that much. Now to face this like crippling anxiety of not only do I have to go into this job that I either hate or don't care about at best, but I now have to worry about some woman claiming that I'm harassing her just so that she can make a funny video and profit off of it. H how many people do you think this is happening to? I, like, it's got to fill people with so much anxiety. I know me personally, whenever I am out and about, and honestly, a lot of this is also because of the fact that I'm fairly recognizable and do get recognized pretty often. But if I'm walking around and someone, like, has a phone pointed at me, I, I'm not assuming positive intent anymore. You know what I'm saying? There's not much I can do. I'm not going to go up and whack the phone out of their hands, but I am going to quickly get out of there. <laughs> I just don't trust people anymore. It, it's it's crazy. And I do I'm also wondering about what the the recording is it a one-party consent state? Is this a two-party consent state? I'm also curious about the details there, but e even if it wasn't even if what she did was completely illegal. Now, this man, who, again, works a pretty basic job, I'm assuming is not absolutely loaded in the Johnny Depp suing people money, now he's in this position where he has to decide if it's worth it to hire a private investigator and find out who she is, make sure that she's served at the proper address, make sure that he pays the filing fees to get her charged, and then maybe, maybe by the end of those thousands of thousands of dollars, maybe he might see justice. Maybe? This is so similar to the funny prank where you walk up to a loving couple and ruin things for them by pretending he's in an affair with you. Now, that's, that's a little bit on the couple. Can I say that? Like, of course you shouldn't be going up and meddling in people's relationships just for fun. What? Like, that reminds me of the guy who sent a bouquet to his neighbor uh, from some other girl just because he was bored. 
Like, yeah, you shouldn't be doing that, but at the same time, if at any point some chick sh rolled up and goes, Lauren, your husband is sleeping with me. I I'm gonna need proof. I'm not just gonna believe you. Are you crazy? What do you mean? Like, if you just expect me to just believe you, you're out of your fucking mind, dude. Call me stupid for that if you want. I'm not believing some random person who just rolls up. Are you kidding me? That's embarrassing. If you have that little faith in your spouse and the person that you vetted, hopefully, to marry, that some rando could just roll up. Like, a little bit ago, I, I posted a video reacting to the guy who throws hair ties and scrunchies into his co-worker's car. And he's starting to, like, up the ante, starting to, like, take long strands of hair and place them and what have you. And it's pretty funny for the most part. But I did get some comments from people who were like, yep, this would end my relationship for sure. And I'm like then just end it now. What are you waiting for? Like, the, if you're that quick to just almost brag online that your relationship has such feeble legs to stand on that a scrunchie would conclusively be the end, you don't even need to give a second thought to it. You're like, oh yeah, I already know I would fall for this. I trust my husband so little that this would... 100% be all I needed to just end it. Like, then just end it. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200, dude. You don't have a relationship at this point. <laughs> oh, damn. This, this scrunchie. She can't see Twitch chat, I believe. How do you feel now, Chupa Chupa? Sorry, Chupa Chups. I see you. I see your chats. I'm looking. <laughs> oh boy, that was funny, but I hope it was a skit because sometimes it can end a new relationship. And, and I will say, again, if it is a new relationship, yeah, it definitely has the power to end it. But this is also why we always lock our car, car doors. Car doors. Some of y'all needed to grow up in Detroit. I, I think, I say this for sure, everyone before they enter the adult world, everyone should at least work a job in either retail or the food industry because it will give you such a, a clearer sense of humanity. But what I wish even more, <laughs> this is a little bit dark, but I think that everyone should experience like a little a little taste of poverty. Like uh, some of you guys, I like when I moved out to the side of the state and out of Detroit, the way people just leave their cars unlocked and their houses unlocked, I'm like, y'all, my parents' cars went for joy rides like three times a year. If I left a bike in the front yard, I did not have a bike the next day. If I left my basketball out, I did not have a basketball. What is this world that y'all live in where you just trust people what what is this y'all need to have experienced more danger i think if you're just running around like nothing bad could happen to me ever like that's that's too much privilege you got to get a little bit of reality i think <laughs> just just a little bit yeah i did grow up in detroit and not like when people say I'm from Detroit, and they're from Livonia, 45 minutes away. Like, actually, Detroit? Uh, Eminem and I actually did not live too far away from each other. And, in fact, uh, I have a friend who lives in Eminem's gated community. We, uh, we saw Haley once leaving from a party there. That was kind of cool. <laughs> but that was not in Detroit. Eminem does not live in Detroit anymore at all. Anyway, on to the next thing that I wanted to cover, but I want you guys to vote. Between these three topics, vote one if you want to react to the woman who says that she's going to break up with their boyfriend if he doesn't get off the PlayStation 5 right away. One for PS5 drama. Two, 
if you want to find out what the Brian with the Y drama is on TikTok, or three, if you want to get right into the story of a woman who's asking if she's the a-hole for telling her fiance that all of his relationships culminated in cheating because he's so emotionally unavailable. So once again, that is one for the PS5 story, two for Brian with a Y, and three for this is why everyone cheats on you. All right, I got two for one, three for three. Actually, that might be three for one. Ooh, everyone wants three. Okay, we'll just jump right into three. I know I only let like five of you vote before making my decision, but you know, I never said this was a democracy. Although that was pretty democratic, actually. Fairly de pseudo democratic. It was quick democraticness. All right. So, this is technically under relationship advice, um, but we'll phrase it as an am I the a hole at the end so that we can use the gavel. I, a 28 year old female, told my fiance. fiance a 28-year-old male. So I'm just going to restart the whole sentence. I don't know why I'm pronouncing things so weird today. I, a 28-year-old female, told my fiancé, a 28-year-old male, that he was cheated on in the last four relationships due to un emotional unavailability and an apology has been requested before moving forward. She says... We were heated, and I think a lot of suppressed emotions have come up since the start of the wedding planning. So, my future husband and I are engaged after five years of dating. We've had a rocky road with my future mother-in-law and the oversharing about us. Now, he won't admit it, but she will nonchalantly bring up things that him and I argued about in private. It'll be over brunch, dinner, etc. that she requested right after a conflict. Oh no, we, we all know about the, uh, the mother-in-law horror stories. I feel like behind so many Reddit issues, there's an underlying mother-in-law issues at like, in like at least 25% of them. A recent example is how we were deciding on buying a house first versus planning the wedding. I have a child who just started kindergarten, so I wanted to set down some roots in a home that she could grow up in. I've had the down payment for over two years and said I would cover his portion or we could work something out. However, during the most recent event his mom invited me to, she randomly said, well, you know, I didn't buy a house until I was 35, so people do things at different times in their lives. But what got to me was knowing that, yet again, another argument that we had in private was brought public to his mom... I will say we're in the third of five paragraphs, and so far I am not fully hearing her talk about the emotional unavailability part, but we'll see if we get there. Typically, now after we have an argument, he will avoid me, go to bed early, deflect among other avoidant things. If I even get the least bit argumentative, he leaves. He not only tells her the bad stuff, though. He may call me second if something good happens, but never first. Sometimes I have to find out things from his mom or other people. Not only this, but he recently showed me a message about the wedding financials where future mother-in-law laid out what she's paying for. And she said, you know, your dad really thinks both parents should be paying the same, but we won't get bogged down by that. I'm literally paying the difference of my portion. It will be 50-50. And he absolutely refused to tell her that because he couldn't see why it was important. So if you're confused by this, basically it sounds like she's, she's entirely paying her half for the wedding. His parents are paying for things, but he's allowing his mom to think that they're paying more than she is for some reason. Now, everything she's described so far would 200% piss me off. I, I would not like that. I would not be happy about that. Especially, I, I, could, I don't think that I could date a super avoidant guy. I'm pretty 
confrontational person. And if, if you need some time to decompress or get into a different headspace before we finalize talking about something, that I can do, but I cannot deal with an absolute shut down ice out. I won't do it. I can't date people like that. So this would all piss me off, quite frankly. All right. I I don't blame her for being unimpressed with the mother-son relationship here. But then we get to the inciting incident. So I reached my tipping point this morning. I realize that this is not just one instance and it probably will continue. So I said that his last four girlfriends most likely cheated on him due to his third presence in the relationship that already provides the emotional and mental support he needs. This presence also has taught him that he is literally always number one and acts as such. An apology has been requested before continuing talking slash wedding planning. So, based on the information provided, simple yes or no chat, should she apologize? I'm curious. She told him he deserved to be cheated on. F her. It yeah, here's the thing. I, I don't understand how she's had time to reflect on this. She's had at least a day by the time she posted this. She's had time to reflect on this. How in the world is she so delusional that she can't at least admit that she said what she wanted to say all wrong? You know what I mean? Clearly, this guy is not completely innocent. He has issues. And to be completely real, his relationship with his mother, his avoidant behaviors, and his over-reliance on her opinion for issues that don't even concern her very likely did lead to relationship issues. But I firmly, firmly, ten toes down, stand on the belief and opinion that it is never your fault if you get cheated on. Whatever you've been doing, they should just dump you. It absolutely can be your fault that you got broken up with, but we're, we're excusing and justifying cheating now? Is that, is that what we're doing? Because essentially, if this is the position that she's taking and committing to, which it really seems as though she's, she's sinking her feet in on this one and is extremely, like, extremely resistant to admitting that she f***ed up, then she is intellectually committing to the belief that there are valid reasons to cheat. So then what happens if later on in the relationship, let's just say he goes, you know what? Forget the apology. You don't need to apologize. You're right. If, if a person goes to their mom for support and comfort to talk things out before his wife under any circumstances, then, you know, cheating is fine. Then what happens if later on in the marriage, they're having an issue and she goes to one of her girlfriends before him? Is he allowed to just take someone to pound town right away? Is that valid? After all, she was displaying emotional unavailability. And if you're not emotionally available, then that means you surrender your monogamy card, right? N no, that's, that's not really how this works. That, nope. And to, and to go so low, this situation right here is a perfect example 
of what men describe when they try to tell people that men have a really, really hard time opening up emotionally about things that they struggle with because oftentimes when they do, it gets weaponized and used against them later. In this situation, him telling her that he was cheated on four times wasn't necessary. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have to tell her that. And there was really no benefit to him telling her this. But he trusted her to be vulnerable and tell her about one of the, the two, I guess I can't say one of, the four worst things that ever happened to him. And I, I can only imagine that if, if I was cheated on in almost every relationship that I was in, had consistently been cheated on, I've got to imagine that I would not be okay. My psyche would be pretty broken, and I would probably have a lot of baggage, yes. I, I have to understand that that was probably something that he was kind of hoping to get out of opening up about this is, hey, if, if I seem a little off sometimes, or if I have trouble opening up, I hope that you understand that it's been because of this continuous, extensive trauma that I faced from past relationships. And instead, she just like loaded it in her cannon, stuffed it down, and just saved it for when she would need to just blow it up in his face. Didn't she? That, that was so unnecessary to the point that she wanted to make. She could have easily said, I, I do think that your relationship with your mother has, has probably caused relationship problems. Like, I, I think that th this is probably an issue I've got to imagine past girlfriends had. But why would you need to bring cheating up? You know what this is equivalent to? This would, this is truly equivalent to if a guy told a girl, God, you could be such a bitch. You know, if you weren't this bitchy, like, I, I bet your last three boyfriends wouldn't have hit you. Well, that was an ill-timed alert. Let me throw this up here. Feel that no one in this situation... Shoot, I lost it. Hold on, where did it go? Did anybody else read that? I gotta find it. Was that on Twitch? It happened so fast! I'm so sorry. If you could retype your comment, I'll get to it. I'm trying to find it, but I think I lost it. Oh, it was so sad. But, but isn't it, it, it truly is, it's victim blaming all the way around. It's victim blaming and you have a right to blame him for the consistent behavior that he is displaying, but to blame him for getting cheated on. That's crazy. Yes, you need to apologize to him. Are you kidding me? And you guys need to go to couples therapy. Big time. I, quite frankly, do we need to rush into the marriage? Do we, do we need to? I, I don't know. I think that we could take our time with this one. <laughs> yeah, therapy, couples counseling, definitely an apology. And let's set some boundaries with mother-in-law, okay? Let's, it's, it's time to set some boundaries there. That's, that's pretty normal for a marriage. I don't think that this relationship is doomed. I think that we do have to remember that almost everybody who has been with someone for a very long time, at one point or another, ends up saying something so incredibly stupid and hurtful and out of character. It's like the, it's like what Bob Marley says, everyone's going to break your heart. It's about deciding who 
is worth having your heart broken for. Only they can decide if this buffoonery and bungholery is worth the rest of their life. But I think they'll be okay. Thank you for the many videos. This is my first live stream. Thanks, Danny. I'm glad you could make it. We, we try to have a good time. Also, I'm peeking at the comment to see if anybody retyped the comment. I'm so sorry that I, I lost it. All right. I think that we can conclusively determine here in the court of the advocate that indeed Kate one, two, three is the a-hole should apologize. And it's also time for dude to get off the teat. You know what I'm saying? Time to fly from the nest a little bit. You know, we love a man who loves his mama. We are skeptical of a man who has that kind of a relationship. You know, the ones with those boy moms. You gotta look out. You gotta look out. And if your mom is one of those boy moms, you gotta tell her. You are going to C block me for the end of time if you don't stop this, mama. Stop it. Get some help. All right. How many of you are familiar or have heard already about the Brian with a Y situation going on over there on TikTok? Every once in a while, something will happen on TikTok. I'm sure you've seen all kinds of stories like this by way of folks like Jolly Good Ginger. I was just coming to say bye before I go Where? back to work. I love you. I love you, bye. <laughs> Tripod appearance for the win. I gotta get a TJ emoji. You guys have me emojis. I gotta get a TJ emoji. Um, but I think we've all seen various stories by way of creators like Jolly Good Ginger where one person discovers evidence of someone else in the world doing something shady. And now it's their mission to find this person's significant other to let them know shadiness is happening. This happened, I want to say, two or three years ago now when a girl was recording her workout and she happened to capture the moment that a married man basically tried to get her to be his sneaky link behind his wife's back. And sure as shit, the internet did their thing, exposed his ass. I don't even know fully what came out of this, but the wife got contacted. Look, we just, we live in a crazy world now. Getting away with things is a lot harder than it's ever been. The walls have eyes, ears, and iPhones, and they are recording at all times. Now that's basically what happened here in the Brian with a Y drama. We're gonna get right into the first video to see what's up. I cannot believe the sequence of events I just witnessed on this flight that I was just on. If your husband's name is Brian with a Y and he was traveling today from Orlando MCO to Chicago O'Hare on Thursday, March 14th, the flight was around 2.15 PM. He sat next to me and the second that he sat down in the seat, he downloaded the Hinge app and created a Hinge profile. And the best part was he was selecting photos from a photo album on his phone titled Dating Apps. He was in a burgundy t-shirt, like a dark red t-shirt, light gray sweatpants, and white on cloud running sneakers that were really dirty. And his backpack was black and it was the Razor brand. He's like a little scruffy, had some like grays in his beard over here. Very like large and in charge gentleman, very attractive. He wears a black watch on his right wrist and a silver wedding band on his left ring finger. And I'll put a picture of it right Just, just a side note, 
1000% agree with you. I'm a big believer in when they tell you who they are, believe them. Okay? Specifically, specifically with the Norman Bates vibes. Okay? Specifically. I will tell you this. I have had one person in my life, one, who has told me, I don't know if this will get tr trigger warning, okay? I'm about to say uh, a, a violence word. One person in my life I've ever heard say to me, I want to stab you. Never in my life have I ever, ever heard anyone else say this. And do you want to know what that man did? That. He did that to me, right? Normal people don't say things like that. You know what I mean? So if a person ever says anything like that, just follow your gut. It They are not lying to you, right? Just take, it, take it from me. All right? Can attest. It right here and he facetimed his wife who i would guess is his wife and his child when they landed and said that he would call them when he got to the hotel if this is your husband dm me on instagram because i have pictures i have proof and this was just a very odd thing to see and stay safe out there girls that was part one of the Brian with a Y drama. Now, I'm sure you saw off in the corner there how many likes that had. This obviously blew up. We were at like 750,000 likes, millions of views. The, the eyes were on it. People were desperate. And I mean, it, it's pretty narrowed down there. If it was just Brian with a Y, I think that we'd probably have a lot of people going, oh shit, I have a Brian with a Y and he was traveling. But from a very, we have a very specific flight. We have the backpack. We have a photo of the wedding ring. It, it seemed as though it was really only a matter of time. Now, f for everyone who is watching the Brian with a Y drama as it was unfolding in real time, it was kind of frustrating because she was coming out with a lot of videos at once about the situation, but all of the videos were nothing burgers. All, every single one of them was like, someone just bought us shots because they recognized me as Brian with a Y girl, or just got recognized again, Brian with a Y, or to just be like her walking around like looking for you, Brian with a Y. Like, very funny, but please, we just want the tea for the love of God. One of them, she called it an update, and the entire update was the, her three minutes of her basically saying she doesn't have an update. And I was like, I, I hate you so much. I hate you more than Brian with a Y at this point. If you do not give me any conclusive information, I am just going to start mass reporting you. I'm kidding, but I, I did not like what was happening. I needed sustenance. I needed the update. So finally, she gets on her returning flight and we get some more action. Oh my God, you guys, you will never guess who was on the flight back from Chicago with me today on Southwest from O'Hare to MCO. Brian with a Y. We were lining up for the Southwest flight. It was like line up from A1 through 60. I was A44. I'm on FaceTime with my boyfriend who picked me up from the airport, by the way, since some of you think that Brian is like somehow my boyfriend and I'm faking it. Not Brian. So I'm standing in line and I look up all of a sudden and I see the Razor backpack. And I'm like, there's just no way that my luck is this good. Like there's, 
how you're questioning me right now on if this is real was exactly what I was thinking in the moment. I was like, there's just no way. There's no way. I thought the odds were maybe potentially he might be on a returning Sunday flight from a Chicago weekend trip, but the odds weren't high, but they definitely weren't zero. Okay, you can hear me But now. there he freaking was. He never saw me. I was behind him. Here I'm going to insert a photo of what he looked like on Thursday. And here is what he looked like today. Same bags, different outfit, same hairline, same cowlick. It was the same guy. Like, I saw him face on. She is committed as hell to this bit. A lot of you were asking me why I don't have a face on picture of him. Like, uh, what did you want me to do? Go up to him and be like, hey, smile. <laughs> like... I couldn't do that. When we got off the plane, I was going to go talk to him or try to like find him and he disappeared. Like I have no idea where he was. He ended up sitting in the sixth or seventh row and I sat in the exit row. So I, I, I got off the plane a few minutes after him and- the, She's got some balls on her, doesn't she? She was like about to go talk to him. Oh my God, if you guys have seen the new uh, Netflix documentary, The Program, she reminds me of the girl who, who led that documentary. The way that she like did not care, she would just go right up to these people and talk to them, no matter what. I, I don't think I personally have the cajones for that, but all right. Unless she doesn't have the guts and she's just lying and saying she was going to, but she didn't. I don't know, that could also be the case, but I do believe her. And I couldn't find him. But can you freaking believe that? You probably can't. And honestly, I don't even blame you because this story is fucking insane. And as a reminder, I posted another update this morning. We still have not found the wife or him. As far as I know, they haven't seen the video, but I don't, I don't know. We don't really have any definitive conclusion to this yet. As a reminder, please message me on Instagram if you have somebody you want me to like check to see if it's him. And that's, that's pretty much where the video ends. She just reminds people of where to contact her. So that that's pretty wild to me that she ends up getting Brian with a Y twice. Although also not the absolute craziest thing in the world to happen. If you're a frequent traveler or flyer for any reason, you probably know that if you're going to and from somewhere, there's actually not like it's not like a bus schedule. There's not like a million different ways to come in and out. Sometimes if you're flying from one city to the other, there's really only like two flights that day, maybe. And you just got to pick which one. So the, the odds of this, especially if they were both just taking a weekend trip, actually pretty high. And based on the photo evidence, I, I don't think we have any reason to believe that she is faking this so i i get why everyone is so invested in this right I, and just to get kind of like a temp check on chat are you invested do you hope for justice are any of you like angry about the brian with the y situation I, i'm curious i just want to know because we do have a final update okay the the truth comes out let's get into it yeah sorry the about my mic being muted earlier during during um videos by the way that i don't know why that every time obs updates it just removes your audio settings you have to reprogram them but i thought i said don't update I really swore that I did, but apparently OBS was like, no, fuck you. Okay, final update time. Let's go. The long awaited final update of the Brian with a Y situation. Two different acquaintances of Brian reached out to me and said that they knew him and his wife. And yes, I have permission from both of them to share all of the information in this video. The first person, Brian was in her wedding and is friends with her husband. The second person, her husband was in the same residency program as Brian like 10 years ago. That's so specific that if I'm Brian or his wife watching right now, I have to know who ratted me out, right? There's no, there's no way that Brian and his wife don't know exactly who contacted this woman. 
A few details I gathered about the situation. Brian with a Y actually is his real name. I know we were speculating maybe he was using a fake name. That's his real name. Him and his wife have been together since they were 16. They have two kids and she's pregnant with a third right now. Brian's wife has been made aware of this. She has seen the videos, but apparently he has also seen the videos and thinks that they're funny. So that's interesting. Brian's wife also said that she knew about this before she saw the videos. She knows that he likes getting attention and flirting with women on dating apps, which lines up with the people I talked to who said that he's been doing this shit for like 10 years. The final update is, from what I can tell, she's fine with it. And it's being handled, or not, privately. And I hope you guys can respect that there's nothing else I can do at this point. Honestly, I was trying to help a woman find out the truth about her husband. But if she's okay with it, that's her choice. And it is what it is. But I want every woman watching this from the bottom of my heart to please know that you deserve better than this. And lastly, I need to clear the air on something. I know in my first video I said he was attractive. I think I just like saw a beard and blacked out. <laughs> and the girls who get it, get it. If you have no idea who Brian with a Y is, go to the playlist linked right here and all the videos that have to do with this story are linked there for you in order. Oh, that was well-timed. Indiana Sporn, I can fix her even though she's a part-time cannibal. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna make my, uh, my alerts last a little bit longer. <laughs> They're going by way too fast. I'm so sorry about that. But all right, there's a lot that we need to break down with this final update here, okay? First of all, I love the comment, there's a reason I grew a beard. <laughs> I, you know, s side beard note, I promise we're getting back to Brian with a Y in a second. Uh, my husband actually could not grow a beard for like most of our relationship, wh which is fine. I've always, always found him super attractive. But then he started using this thing called a derma roller, which it's, um, it's just like a roller, but it has these tiny little spikes on it. And what it does is it's designed to like open up the pores in men's faces to promote facial hair growth. And, like, it resulted in a full-on beard. Like, dude literally went from, le like, actually professionally playing a 16-year-old boy late into his 30s for stage shows to, like, zaddy. You know what I mean? Like, I just thought that that might be a little pro tip for any dudes struggling in the facial hair department. If you want to get a beard, uh, get the little spiky rollers, dude. That shit, like made that thing blast out like a chia pet and got to admit it's hot it is it is a hot beard must say anyway um back to brian with a y i want to break everything down here because i've seen a couple of different responses to this final update and some people have some various opinions one response that I saw essentially was saying, how dare you meddle when this couple is very clearly polyamorous? Now, that's one possibility. That That is a possibility. Based on the things that she said, it is possible that they have an open marriage, that this is totally normal for them. And that she is way outside of her business box and this was completely unnecessary. However, I personally, based on the details that she provided in this, I, I don't know if polyamorous is it. First of all, when people are poly, and they're already in a position of openly discussing their sex life. Let's say someone is asking them if they're single, if they want to be exclusive. Usually a poly person will at this time simply say, oh yeah, I'm polyamorous, right? Typically they don't kind of duck around it and use the language that she used. So the part that I'm hung up on is that she said, she knows that he likes to get attention from and flirt with girls on dating apps. 
that's very different than she's okay with him meeting up with them and hooking up, right? So now we have to decide which reality makes more sense. Do we think it's more likely that Brian with a Y uses dating apps just to practice his riz, just to get compliments, just to chit chat as buddies, n never actually meeting these people, n never any of that, just when he's away from his wife and traveling, that's when he just only and exclusively wants the emotional companionship. D do we think that's even in the realm of reality? Or do we accept the more real reality, which is that people use dating apps to fuck? <laughs> he, they are no one... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to be this close-minded, but... I, if you try convincing me that you only use dating apps to flirt with no intention of anything ever turning physical, I am not going to believe you. I do not believe that. I think that you are serving me a crock pot full of horse manure, quite frankly. That's, that's not a thing. It's not, because if you're just looking for some emotional validation, you could just go to so many various subreddits or chat forums. You're not going to use a dating app which is centered around your location, right? The, the other thing that's leading me toward believing that this is not a consensual polyamorous relationship is the fact that he is downloading the app fresh. You know what I mean? It, it is a, a fresh dating app. Now, this could still be a polyamorous relationship and maybe he's like, you know what, I'm just not having great results on, on Tinder and Bumble. I I'm going to try this new dating app and now is a great time to download it and set it up because I have some free time and then it'll be all waiting for me when I get there. Totally possible. Indiana shows, yeah, derma rolling, derma stamping. Where do yours keep going? Let me, let me just take a quick minute to jump over to Streamlabs and make those last a little bit longer in the alerts. Because I feel bad that you're donating, but I am not able to read it because it's like flying. Um, and then there was something else that she said that just seemed, just seemed off. Um, but th those two were the, the biggest ones to me. The fact that he's downloading the app fresh, like as soon as he's away from her, which to me that feels like he probably had to have deleted it in the past because this was an issue. <laughs> and is now just going right back to his old ways because he's gotten away with it for years and he knows that he's going to get away with it again. It's just that the language that is being used here is to me coded more as she is so lost in denial, which happens a lot. Um, a lot of us when we're cheated on would, we're more prone to accepting these lies that really don't make any sense if it means avoiding the more painful reality of like, oh, you actually would fully cheat on me. That, and that's how people get away with these like really weak excuses of like, oh, well, babe, like, 
nothing happened. Like, I know that you found text messages of me saying, she's gone, come over, but she didn't actually come over. And then, like idiots, we... A lot of us actually fall for this kind of stuff, even though if you're watching a soccer game, if someone shoots the ball at their own team's net, you notice they don't get points if they miss. Their teammates are still very angry at them for, for shooting the ball at the wrong net. Do you get the metaphor that I'm saying here? You don't get brownie points when you attempted to cheat and failed, <laughs> right? That That's not at all a get out of jail free card. In my opinion, attempting to cheat is as bad as cheating. It is not a lesser crime because you suck at pulling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're not a worse cheater because she actually agreed to it, you're still an equal cheater to everybody else who tried to cheat. Like, of course we'd be more willing to accept, okay, well, my husband was just flirting, but he's not. He's on a dating app. People don't go on dating apps to flirt. I... We are so lost in the delusion here if, if we are honestly trying to believe that that's the case. All right, let me make this donation last just a bit longer. Bits. We're going to make bits last a little bit longer. Server error. Your mom's a server error. All right, I don't know if I actually updated this or not. Honestly, I still think Brian didn't exist. This woman took a picture of a random guy twice, then made up a story using woman read. That's, I'm sorry, but that's an even crazier theory, don't you think? Because how would she know that that random guy was going to be on her return flight? Brian exists. I totally believe that this story exists. All right? It, it, it is so far and away not unlikely that a dude who travels for work a lot is on the low cheating on his wife while coming up with excuses that he gets her to believe because though all of those excuses feel better than believing that the man who you're currently pregnant with his child would do that to you the she's lost in the denial and cope and th at least that's my opinion. Now, if I'm wrong and they are, honest to God, a polyamorous couple, which they might be, then it is a little off to me that she's going around saying, oh, honey, you deserve better. When, like... <laughs> That's not really your place to say that, though, right? Like, if if the wife has communicated to you, and you can choose to believe her or not, but, like, if the wife is telling you, I don't care, then it's really not your place to say, like, oh, well, then you deserve better. You didn't even know who she was f five days ago. You still don't know anything about her or their relationship dynamic. For all you know, she is also cheating. She could have five to ten himbos on the side right now. There, there could be an active train happening as we speak. You don't know that she deserves better. She could be a racist anti-Semite. Y'all don't know. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I am the one who said no one deserves to get cheated on. So even if she is a racist anti-Semite, technically, you know what? No, racist anti-Semites deserve to be cheated on. I renege my opinion. I actually have changed the terms. <laughs> racist anti-Semites are allowed to get cheated on. I'll allow it, actually. It's, it, it has been codified. <laughs> <laughs> it is known. 
One, men have bad luck on those sites. Two, I've seen similar stories where she took both picks, then released the story for clout. Clout chasers lie. That is true. That is true. The whole thing could be fake. It could be. And, and if it is fake, I applaud her acting. Because she had me going. Like, her disbelief, her incredulousness, and her disappointment were palpable. So if this is a ruse, then you know what? She deserves the win. An Academy Award for this lady. Especially in the torture department when she like kept us on pins and needles for all those days. I'll allow it. If it's fake, I'll allow it. If Brian and his wife are polyamorous, I'll allow it. That's their business. And if, if Brian with a Y is telling his wife that all he's doing is flirting with these people, just getting a little bit of attention, it's just for the ego stroke, babe. I'm not actually doing anything. Now, if that's the case, Brian sucks. Brian sucks total farts through a straw out of a butthole, okay? If that's the case, if anybody ever tells you, oh, the only reason I'm on a dating app is like just to see what's out there. You should not have dating apps if you're in monogamous relationships. There is no reason for it. There is no reason to have a dating app while in a committed monogamous relationship. Don't let people lie to you, y'all. That's if, if they try telling you, um, it's just for flirting. It's just for friendship. You pop, pop, pop with the no bottle. You do a full on drive by pop, 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 with the no bottle. You do not, we do not let these people get away with this, the spung hollowry. It's crazy. Brian be needing that extra external validation. But then post a pic to Instagram, dude. Like, be normal. Just, just be normal. But that, is the Brian with a Y drama. Okay? Now you know. We're all caught up. What do you guys think? Uh, do, do you hate Brian? Are you team... Are you uh, team Brian where you actually think that he's polyamorous? Or do you think that he's a stinky liar? What do you think? Type polyamorous if you think he's poly... Type, type stinky if you think Brian stinks. Stinks like fish breath. I dislike Brian and I hate the woman posting. <laughs> Everyone sucks here. Stinky. Stinky and Polly. <laughs> Shaggy defense. It wasn't me. It was a different Brian with a Y in a razor backpack who has the exact same titanium black and silver stripe wedding ring and the exact same. God, she had the brand name of the shoes and everything. Oh man, Brian is a stinky dude. Polly people are all cheaters. That's a crazy take, dude. No way. If you agree that you can bang other people, then it's all consensual. That's not cheating. You can cheat in poly relationships though. Like, there, there are still rules. Like, you can say, I don't care if you sleep with other people as long as you use protection. If you don't use protection, you're cheating. But if you sleep with ten people that same day, all with condoms, then you're good. You're not cheating on anybody. I, I totally support ethical non-monogamy. I don't do it. I don't practice. I'm a very monogamous person. Um, but... I, I definitely think that plenty of people, that, that works for them, right? And there are ways to do it without, not everybody has their feelings hurt. Like, I just learned a new word. Um, there's a couple of words that I've been learning in regards to polyamory. One of them, and again, these are things that I don't experience. I just, more power to the people who do. But one of them is the term compersion. And what compersion means is the feeling of joy or satisfaction when you see the person that you love 
being in a happy, loving relationship with someone else. It's, it's like you're so happy for them, like you love them so much that it makes you feel good when they are being treated well and in a satisfying relationship with someone else. Um, and I, I think that the concept of that is beautiful because I don't feel that way. <laughs> the thought of my man being with anyone else is actually illegal, so I can't relate. But if that's something that people are experiencing, I think that's beautiful. Another term that I learned is when two people who are not together have a partner that they share, then they are called metas to each other. And some people have like really strong meta relationships. This could, this is uh, pretty much the concept of like sister wives or brother husbands. Is that, is that a thing? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, you know, Lauren said to just drop out and watch the Advocate all day. Look, avoid a student debt. Just watch my streams. <laughs> That's a, how to erase student debt. Just don't go to school. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> now, I will agree, actually. Um, who's, who said that? Crispy. Um, Crispy Fort said, I actually like that all of my exes are happy with their new partners. And now that is a type of compersion that I myself feel. I will agree, I do feel that way, but a part of that is because I, I no longer have romantic feelings for those people. Um, but like, yeah, I will say, I've said this before, I'll say it again because it's true, like all of my exes wifed up like baddie, babes truly people who are so much better for them than we would have ever been together and i'm i really am so happy for them they deserve to succeed they deserve to find happiness um because after after the one bad guy that i dated y'all know that i referenced earlier um the the one psycho i did date good guys after that i will say i learned my lesson the hard way, <laughs> big time. I did not continue dating losers, I must say. <laughs> Why are you guys talking about popcorn so hard in the chat? What? <laughs> I feel like it's for the last hour, y'all will not drop the popcorn. Like we just, you love popcorn so much. <laughs> Anyway, get your popcorn ready. We are going to go over this next video that covers like pretty much all of the stages of grief in a relationship. And I'll preface this video by saying it's 1000% a skit. There is no real danger. These people are absolutely trolling each other. A lot of people tagged me in this like, Lauren, get them. It's real. It's real. And it's not, but it does. What's the word that I want to say? It does kind of showcase what are very real behaviors in a relationship. And the fact that it's becoming a trend for people to casually joke about what are essentially abusive techniques it's it's a little weird to me so let's watch this together and i just want to know if you guys see what i mean when i when i say that if you don't get Oops. off the ps5 i'm so sorry right i got now, you i'm breaking i got y'all on my stream labs instead of i went to the wrong page my bad my bad if you don't get off the ps5 Right now, I'm breaking up with you. That's right. That's right. So already we have two. We have um, strict ultimatums that 
are in no way centered around reasonable boundaries within the relationship followed by the attempt at establishing a positive affirmation utilizing baby voice to kind of um what's the word i'm looking for uh in order to patronize him so the de demeaning techniques so again even though this is a skit she is frighteningly aware of how and what to do. <sighs> I'm sorry. Are you going to take me on a date now? Yeah. I was, I was planning one. I have one planned. Really? Where were you going to take me? Um, to your favorite spot. Like the really nice restaurant? The one that you really like. I want Wagyu. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to go shopping before so I can go find an outfit? Shopping too, bro. Fuck. What? Oh, shit. Pack your shit. Uh, Are you being for real? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. The, uh, yeah, again, I have to keep stressing that this is a skit because, God, the that voice is, I think we've all heard that voice. But the, the next technique is the, the making them feel guilty for doing whatever thing that she didn't like, even if it's just a something normal. He is relaxing in a house that is already clean, doesn't seem as though there's anything for, else for him to do. But then the, good, good, now what are you going to do to make it up to me? The, even though this is a skit, I'm just wondering why the skit is centered around domestic abuse techniques. I'm waiting for the funny part. I guess I, I think the funny part is supposed to be him being done with her. Maybe it's not supposed to be funny, but maybe it's supposed to be more satisfying. Are you serious right now? Uh-uh, I'm not, I'm not no big. Get off. Uh, I paid for this. Get off. I also am like a little, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know if these people who make these videos and, and there have been several, we're going to go over one right after this, where it's a skit that involves the hands coming at the face like this. I don't know if these content creators understand how triggering that is and trust me when i say i'm really not much of a like sensitive trigger type person i'll occasionally say trigger warning if it's actually for something that is in my opinion something that people have like legitimate ptsd triggers toward but i don't tend to throw it around all willy-nilly as some um kind of safer circles do i guess but i i think that I'll, for any of us who experienced hitting in a past relationship, don't you don't you get kind of like a, a visceral upsetting reaction whenever you see that? And I'm sorry, I'm gonna do it again, but the the this, whenever you see that, don't you like flinch a little? Like I do. I whenever I see the hands starting to fly, I just it's completely inappropriate. It's completely inappropriate to me. I don't find the humor. I do not think that it's okay because you're 80 pounds lighter or whatever excuses that these people like to throw in. Like, oh, well, I'm a woman, I'm a man. So it's funny when I do it. It's not actually, it's triggering and upsetting to people who have experienced DV in their lives. And we don't think it's cute, even if it's for a skit. That's just me. Some of you might think that I'm being a little bit overly sensitive, getting me my panties in a twist over nothing, but the, and the, it just feels gross to me. You know what? You don't tell me what to do. That's the thing. Really? Yep. I'm gonna go get with your best friend then. Now, if it was meant to be satisfying, 
very satisfying that in the end, none of these techniques work. But correct me if I'm wrong, the bit here, the funny joke here is I'm going to boss you around, make unreasonable demands, talk down to you, treat you like dirt, demand the princess treatment, display entitled behavior, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to threaten you with something that I know will make you deeply insecure and is a risky and dangerous behavior that I am purely engaging in out of malicious spite. I am I am going to threaten you to engage in a behavior that could literally bring a child into this world. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and potentially bring a life into this world as an empty threat to try to get you to behave. That's, uh, that's the joke, Tino and Shelby. That's what you guys like to make fun of? Indiana, so of course he can challenge her to fencing. I don't get that one. Thank you for the dono, but I don't get it. Wait, why fencing? Am I an idiot? I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I... I don't understand why channels do things like this. And I typically would say that I generally understand jokes and I understand satire. And I think to them, the joke is, haha, wouldn't it be funny if we were actually in an abusive relationship, but we're not? Uh, so you're just flexing on people who do experience this as a reality every day? Like, what? Why would you do that? What? So you, you're basically just trying to profit in a safe space off of the rage reaction that people who have actually experienced this face that's the the bit i uh i don't agree i think that it's it's really shitty what we're doing here that this has become kind of a social media trend that the video is I'm going to create a skit where our relationship is just entirely toxic. I'll give them this though. Man, and I will also say this, dude. I I really thought that like the from the beginning of this video that bro just had a humiliation king. That was actually my first guess. It was like, "Oh, okay, so he just has a humiliation king and like this is his thing, but then the video kept going on. <laughs> I'll, but I'll, I'll at least give them the, the, the credit that at least they're not then later in the comments going, why are you being so mean to him? Guys, it was a joke. Quit being mean to him. Like, just neither of them care. <laughs> so at least there's that, I guess. Like, at least this isn't partner shaming. At least they're in on making fun of abuse victims together? Maybe that's good? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm reading some of the comments right now. Apart from the video, what's wrong with Bro's voice? Um, I think that he's just not a great actor. But I mean, no one on TikTok making these stupid skits. This is right up there with the aggressively serving my husband dinner skit. Like, these people are not 
actors, there's people with iPhones trying to make a buck, you know? I think that explains that. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, unimpressed. Unimpressed with that skit. I don't like that couple. All right. I told you guys, though, that we were going to watch a video right after that. That's another skit that's up there. So while we're on the topic of this new phenomenon or TikTok creators are feigning DV situations to be funny, here's another one. Wow. Wish your wood got this hard. Yeah, but this wood doesn't hear you bitch all the time. How dare you? <laughs> wow. So again, the joke here is I insult him, he insults me back, but I get to beat him. It's, it's funny, right? You, you, do you guys get the funny joke? It's, it's cause she's a woman and he's a man. So it's funny when she slaps him across the head and commits actual assault. It's funny. Now, okay. It's, it's not assault if it's consensual. Plenty of people have slapping kinks. And plenty of couples agree to be hit for a joke, right? So in this particular case, I don't actually believe that this man didn't consent to this. I think that they agreed beforehand, I'm going to make a, a joke at the expense of your penis, then you're going to make a joke at the expense of me expressing myself and will follow all that up with an act of me committing violence against you. C comedic genius, brilliant writing here. Um, I, I believe that they agreed to all of that. Again, my question is, why do you think that's funny. Like, what brought you to the realization that the, the way that you wanted to market yourself and brand yourself is that we treat each other like shit and lay hands on each other? Again, the, the honestly, the, the back and forth lines of like, I make fun of you, you make fun of me, that can very much be funny. I think we all remember the Lockhorns from the Sunday Night Funnies, which was like this elderly couple that pretty much had this bit. Like, he would make fun of her, she would make fun of him right back. Why'd you have to slap him? Like, it actually made a sound. I don't know. I'm sure that this is for someone, but for for those of us who like actually got slapped when we did something wrong in a relationship, we we're just kind of watching this like, oh, so you get to sit there in your position of privilege, having not actually experienced a relationship like this and getting to make fun of people like me who have. Cool. That's cute. That's that's very nice. Good job, guys. Like that That that's how I interpret stuff like this. You could have done like a I I don't know. I, who am I to police these channels? That's just my reaction to it. I think that these are extremely privileged people who are punching down to domestic violence victims so that they can have a laugh. And it's weird. It's a little weird to me. Definitely kind of weird.
I have a couple more videos that we're going to react to. Hmm. Probably all of these are triggering, but I'm going to start on this one. What is Poor guy, he's been looking for his sunglasses all day to pack for vacay tomorrow, but he doesn't want to ask me because he wants to prove that he can find and pack his crap himself, even though I already packed it. You can see my comment here in the corner already. My comment says, uh, you can't really read it, but my comment says, I know this is a joke, but self-fulfilling prophecies like this are so annoying in relationships. Like, did he say he's trying to prove a point, or was that an assumption? Does you beating him to finishing the task actually disprove his ability to do it himself? Little games like this almost ruined us in our early years of marriage. So glad we actually communicate now. Let's see if she replied. Someone actually replied to me and said, many women don't see it like this, but she's demeaning him and making him look bad on the internet. Don't know about anyone else, but that for me is zero tolerance. All right. I guess our, our comments here are uh, are getting some likes. So not everybody appreciates this, but that that's exactly right. This right here is 100% just a self-fulfilling prophecy. She wants to prove that he can't pack for himself by doing it before he gets to it. And it's so annoying. And this is something that I was really guilty of early on. And I'm extremely embarrassed of past tense Lauren's behavior. But I would literally, like, do things like, for example, uh, I'll say to myself, starting off the day, like, I, you know what? I bet that TJ is not going to do the dishes today. I bet you anything that he's just going to walk past that sink full of dishes and not do anything. And then instead of actually like saying out loud, like, man, those dishes being there are really stressing me out or anything or anything even remotely addressing the dishes, I, I stay silent and he doesn't do the dishes because he's doing other things. And then at the end of the day, I get to go, see, I was right. I knew he wasn't going to do the dishes. You know what I mean? And like, how is that, how is that helping anybody? How is that cute? How is that funny? How does that prove that I'm right at all? You know what I mean? It, and someone else said, don't touch a man's stuff. And that, that's also a huge part of it too is like of course he's going to be confused you moved it and now you think that you're making a point but you're actually just gaslighting this dude this is literally the definition of gaslighting you know where his sunglasses are and you're watching him look for them refusing to help leading him to think that he's crazy and, and doesn't know where he put them, but he does know where he put them. Th this is so damaging in so many ways. And let's just expound on that. Not only are you creating damaging self-fulfilling prophecies, engaging in damaging gaslighting toward your husband, causing him to second guess himself and his reality for no good reason, but now you're also partner shaming him. You're putting him on blast to the entire internet to make him look and feel stupid again for no reason. You guys are about to go on vacation. For God's sake, just enjoy your vacation. What, what is it with this country where 
privileged people don't want to accept their privilege. It's like all of these people are in positions where they could just be enjoying their lives and instead they're choosing to curate problems so that they can try to shoehorn their way into victimhood when you could just enjoy your fucking vacation with with a healthy relationship with your spouse and instead you're you're going to cause problems and and potentially lead to tension throughout this entire trip why are you doing this? Why are we sabotaging ourselves like this? There's no reason for it. This is an illness. This is a sickness. This is a disorder. This is brain worms. Just enjoy your fucking vacation, you lunatic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being a little harsh. I am. But I also think it's a little harsh to take hours off your husband's life over sunglasses so that you can grab on to this this tiny little straw of superiority like do, do you want to be told that you're the best packer in the US is that what you need do you like need to know like you're so much more responsible than him? You're the most responsible wife who ever lived and he's a dumb stupid husband. Is that what you need? If so, why? Why is your brain so broken that you don't think you have a successful happy relationship that's worth bragging about if you don't get to say that you're the responsible one? Wouldn't you just much rather be able to say, I'm so excited for this vacation that I get to look forward to because me and my husband are both independent, autonomous people who've contributed to it? Wouldn't you just rather say that? Why, why do we exist in a society where we would all rather get together and shit talk our spouses than anything else? Why is that what women more commonly bond over is the failures of the people that we chose? I guess it can simply be summed up as like misery loves company, but it can also be summed up as this is embarrassing and I hate it. <laughs> All right, let's take a very, very, very quick BRB break. Uh, like no more than 10 minutes. It's 1.14 p.m. EST now. So at 1.25 p.m. EST for sure I'll be back. I just gotta run to the bathroom and get my water real quick and then we'll get right into some more stuff. So BRB.
All right, I'm back, y'all. I have my beloved busted ass fake Stanley. Dude, look how, like, by a thread this shit is hanging on. What the f- How long do you think this has left? Do you think it's about to, like, literally bust off in my hands? That was so dirty sounding. I'm so sorry. Please nobody clip that out of context. But now you definitely will, because y'all are a-holes like that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It was a $15 fake Stanley, and it keeps the drinks so cold. I'll put ice cubes in here, and the ice cubes will still be in there 24 hours later. It's magic. I don't care that this is <laughs> the most janky bootleg thing I've ever seen. Like I said, I'm from Detroit, okay? I will always be a cheap bastard deep down, no matter what. Super glue will help. <laughs> I'm gonna let it get to that point, though. Because <laughs> it's gonna be so funny when this just explodes everywhere and I just have like a lap full of water and I look like I've peed myself. It's gonna be so funny. Mm. The, so the spray bottles, the no bottles, were originally for my cats. Like I made this to be like, get away from the food. But then it just kind of became a bit that like whenever I was covering someone doing something cringy, I would just like psh, psh, which I do to my phone because it's water resistant, but I'm not about to try it with my webcam or computer. I don't want to have to like clean everything, you know? So we just, we just pretend to psh, psh, for here. Uh, all right. The stream's not going to be super long today. I'm going to cover a couple more little stories. Am I the a-holes videos? Um, because I want to film something today. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to get that done um, for kind of a longer video. But all right, what do I want to cover next? Here we go. Let's get these back on. Oh, just knocked over the no bottle. The next topic. Reason one million and one why the dating apps fucking suck is the men on there are ass fucking ugly. Y'all literally built the fire, then climbed into the pot. You decided amongst yourselves that putting effort into how you look, caring about your appearance means you're gay. Now you're unattractive and women don't want to be with you. And yet you somehow still feel entitled to having an attractive, intelligent partner. But then she makes you feel insecure because you don't like how you look. You don't feel good about yourself. You lack self-confidence and then you blame her. If you don't put effort into how you look and how you present yourself, why would I think you're going to put effort into me and our relationship if you can't even do it for yourself? Take a fucking shower, get a haircut, get a skincare routine, and start wearing some better clothes that fit and look good put some fucking effort in and you may start getting some more matches and if you're going to be offended by this i would strongly suggest you look at the amount of matches you have and take a look at yourself do something about it reason what so this was a thing that was posted um and it's there are grains of truth there are grains of truth in what appears to be overall an extremely angry reaction to men not being attractive enough to her. It is kind of what I'm getting out of it. Now, the nuggets of truth that I'm talking about are absolutely it is true that basic hygiene is critical if if you want to find a partner i do not care where you are at on the sliding scale of attractiveness you could be a perfect 10 and if you smell like rotten meat it's it's 
gonna bring you down significantly. Uh, that's that's one of those things where, God, my my eyes might like to look at you, but if I cannot even stand being around you due to your odor, that's good. That's gonna be a problem, right? So I think that we can agree. If this video was just about controllable aspects like hygiene, sure. But she seems really angry that men are daring to be mid. Am I understanding that correctly? Because I, I also don't like her um, her standard of what makes you credible, which is basically, oh, well, if you don't have enough matches on a dating site, I think it goes to show that you're clearly the issue. And I think a lot of this is just that she's a bit out of touch with the entire experience of being a man. A and I can tell that based on this entire video. Like, let's, let's talk about some things for a minute, okay? You as a woman have a lot that you can play to in in just this right here uh makeup you're wearing it you have access to that tool that majorly enhances appearance let's be honest okay i don't think that she could in good conscience say that she would be as attracted to a man who wore foundation to cover his acne. I think that she would probably consider that an ick. So we already have that removed. Down to like doing her eyebrows. She has drawn on eyebrows. We have mascara. Um, I don't... Men can wear piercings. That's a personal preference for, for the things that are are adding on to here, um, even down to like physical appearance. I don't even know that she's wearing a bra based on what I can tell, but like women have access to things like push up bras and shapewear that also enhance their physical appearance. Whereas when we find out that men wear shoe inserts, or, like, God forbid, something that makes your junk look bigger. Or if we found out that, like, a man was wearing, like, a stuffed bodysuit or something under his shirt. I think we would all be horrified. Right? Us women have a lot more at our disposal for things that can significantly crank up our attraction. Is that fair to say? I just think it's easier for a woman to have access to things and treatments that would make her more objectively attractive than a man does. Is that fair to say or do you guys disagree with me? I, cause I, I would, I'm 100% open to pushback here. I'm sure that there's a lot of arguments to be said for like, well, guys don't have to spend as long on their hair or maybe even some of you argue that men are held to a lower standard of investment in their appearance as women Perhaps that could be argued. My argument is just that men don't have access to as many things that really can improve their physical appearance. 
Again, if this was just about hygiene, I wouldn't even be reacting to this. If a woman came on here and was like, I am so sick of guys expecting dates when they won't shower or put on deodorant. Every man, woman, non-binary, trans, furry, every person, every living, breathing being would be very likely to agree with that statement. I don't think you're going to find very many people who are like, I'm here to represent those of us who we don't shower, we don't wear deodorant, we don't brush our teeth, and we deserve bitches. Like, I don't think that that's got a very leading parade behind it. You know what I mean? I, I really don't think so. Uh, so, but we all agree on the hygiene part, but what exactly are these demands of like physical appearance that men aren't stepping up to the plate to do? She seems like very, very upset that y'all are not dressing in form fitting enough clothing. Uh, and I mean, is, is that true fellas? Because if it, if it's true, that you are not going out of your way to ensure that your clothes are perfectly tailored by God. Like, don't get me wrong, some of this advice could help. I, but this seems like a lot of, uh, feels like displaced anger. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the real issue is at hand here. Is she not getting enough matches or at the very least not, is she angry at the quality of her matches? Is she upset that she's not pulling enough chads? She's only getting brads and dads and that's bads? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> My middle-aged female friend says I need to wear more form-fitting clothes. Okay, so that's good advice then. Yeah, I agree. Wear stuff that looks good on you, right? But, holy cow. Reason one million and one why the dating apps suck. But she doesn't really explain how the phenomenon that she's experiencing, this, this, evil, grotesque, societal issue where men are not hot enough. I don't- how is that the dating app's fault? Is- is the argument that because you're able to, like, pick your best filter or picture from a time in which you were hygienic, preventing men from practicing consistent hygiene? Is that the argument? Because it wasn't made. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, guys there's nothing wrong with her physical appearance i think that her physical appearance is fine i'm just having a hard time understanding there's my comment if a guy made this video about women y'all would be scream crying and throwing up that's <laughs> sorry but it's true i mean could you like could you imagine though i know that this video didn't exactly pop off we, we've got a good almost 4,000 hearts, a couple hundred comments. Like, it's, it's not exactly the most viral sensation, but enough to show, okay, women agree with this. And she's not really getting... She's really not getting hate in the comments. Your hair, slay. This guy got ratioed. Don't change for no woman kings. Her, like, sassy response ratioed him, so she's winning. Um, yeah, everyone seems to be, like, clap reacting her. Chase seems to speak to the male experience. I mean, I think I take pretty decent care of myself, am a decent person, and I still rarely get likes, let alone matches. And I think this part, this speaks to what I was saying about how she seems kind of disconnected and, like, out of touch from the male experience. I don't think that she realizes how few matches in general the average man gets compared to women. It, it's radically different 
I believe women get at least three times more matches. Something like that. Dads over chads. I could not agree with you more. I, we're only dilf hunters here. No chilf hunters. <laughs> but could you imagine if a dude came on this app and was like, you want to know the problem with these dating apps is all these women come on here wanting the princess treatment, wanting a husband, wanting someone to take care of them, but then they look like a foot. Like, I'm sorry, Becky, but you're going to need to brush your hair, put on clothes that actually complement your body if you want me to talk to you. And if you're mad about it, take a look around you. Do you have a ring on your finger? Do you have a boyfriend? No, it's because you're a sad sack of shit. Deal with it. How do you think that would go? Literally think of, can you think of a single male content creator who could get away with that? Just one. I, and again, they're going to come back, but it's different, but it's different. It's, it sounds the same to me. <laughs> that would, if it's, if that would be a crazy thing for a dude to say, you really need to do some explaining to me why it's not crazy when you say it, right? They would get dragged. I would love to see that video, though. I'd give it under three hours before full-on doxing. Oh, bye, Neo Wolf. But Lauren, I can change her. You could, actually. You could fix her. I believe in that. She's yours, bro. <laughs> All right. I don't even remember what this one is. So we're about to both be surprised together. Wait. Oui. Me arriving at the princess treatment competition. Oh, shoot. I want to hear what this guy has to say. Sorry. Let's replay this with sound. I was afraid that I was going to have licensed music. I would just like to point out that the most horrific faux pas that the modern man can commit is asking to be treated nicely. Reason one million and yeah, I just wanted to show that one. Now I remember what it was. I just wanted to show that real quick, just as a just as a little quickie, because someone sent that one to me. And if you didn't read it in time, it said uh, when you go to enter the princess competition, but everyone you're competing against is just men from this generation. And so we have a man who. I think it's perfect that he's literally fulfilling like all of the checkboxes of what masculinity looks like or is embodied by to come on here and say, oh, well, f me for just wanting to be treated nicely. Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And he nailed it. That's exactly what's happening is there, this is a manipulation tool that women are like collectively using to almost collectively gaslight men into thinking that they should feel guilty and stupid for asking for basic decent treatment. We see this all the time when men start to express. Cameron says, I think if a man, the, if a man did this test is pretty universal gauge for unhinged content. Uh, yeah, for the most part, every once in a while, I'll see something where it's like, well, obviously that's literally unique to like the male or female experience every once in a blue moon, but I can't even think of a, a topic for it. 
It should be pretty easy. We learn this in preschool. If you wouldn't like it being done to you, don't do it. But with this princess treatment stuff, we have guys who all they're saying is like, hey, it would be really nice if you did something, like put effort into like maybe giving me a gift or like taking me out. And they're being told like, ooh, look who's being sassy. As if, as if being treated well is only for the girls. I've covered this countless times because it's a very pervasive, consistent issue that we're seeing in society where the, the girls are working together to essentially train each other like, no, we cannot treat men too well because then they get spoiled and they cheat on us. What we have to do for each other, to empower each other as women, is treat the men poorly. Because if you treat your man too well, you're setting your sisters up for failure. Because now she's going to have to put in all that effort to match your effort when what you could be doing is setting the bar nice and low so that these men know better than to expect being treated well by us girlies. It's a replication of the age-old boys club issues that women faced where men were able to collectively gaslight women by convincing them like, oh, well, everybody's husband cheats when they're out of town, so you should just deal with it. Or every, every woman gets hit once in a while, so that's no reason to divorce him. And it worked for a really long time. And, and now that we're really starting to shame those behaviors and shame that accepted by society mentality, the answer is not to replace it in kind, is it? How, how is that going to work? When in history has repeating cycles of abuse ever stopped a problem from reoccurring? Like, I, I, I truly cannot think of a time in history where it's like, oh, well, you know, he murdered someone, so we just murdered someone he cared about and after that he realized what he did was wrong and he never did it again what what kind of backwards ass logic is this i i i vehemently disagree i think it's perfectly fine for men to want to be treated well especially when we exist in a society where at least half of all wives make as much or more than their husbands. I've seen a lot of conflicting data, but of everything that I've seen, it's at least half. So if you're making as much or more than your husband, half of us, then it makes sense that at least half of these husbands are not wrong for thinking that you have the means to treat them as well as they treat you. That's crazy. All right. Let's get into this next one. Gone down drastically this year as for looks. Financials have gone up, looks have gone down. Even if you have small feet, you're still on the roster. And I like uglies too. <laughs> so if you misheard, they started filming like while she was already in the middle of talking. She says, gone down drastically this Standards have gone down drastically. Financials are up, looks are down. To which the giggly blonde in front says, and I like uglies too. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, and I guess they think that it's like a new 
thing. They think that this is a new, unique idea that they have to, while being in a bikini, let desperate men know that they can be bought. I guess to them, this is a brand new concept <laughs> that they're like just now figuring out. Apparently they think that like 2024 is the first year where women in bikinis have offered themselves to unattractive men for money. <laughs> Congrats on the new invention. Someone get these women on Shark Tank. <laughs> how did how do you think they came up with this? What do you, do you think that they like got together in a big business room with the other big brains of the world to to noodle on this one? <laughs> Wait a minute. This is crazy to me. I can't believe this. So they're telling me that a guy doesn't have to be attractive if he can pay enough for a woman? Did you guys know this? I, we are all just now finding out. I hope this better be on every news station. I gotta call my mom and dad. They are gonna be so astonished to hear this. <laughs> it's not lost on me either that they're right outside of a hotel making this you know the usual location <laughs> they're innovators you guys <laughs> someone's gonna you know vape her all right all right, all right. What's this one? What is this one? Well, let's let's cover another. I really don't remember half the stuff that I even set up for us to watch, but we're getting into it. Okay, this video is for the Psycho Girls, so if you're not- Whoops, forgot to switch over. You always know a video is going to be wild when it starts out like this. Okay, this video is for the psycho girls, so if you're not psycho, just keep scrolling. Today, I'm teaching you a play out of my own book. If there is ever a guy that, like, screws you over and you have his favorite hoodie, or any of his hoodies for that matter, do not spray them with perfume before you give them back. First of all, it's obvious it shows you care. Second of all, yeah. that's so two years ago. Instead, wash his hoodie, put his hoodie in the dryer, and shrink that shit. Thank me later. Okay. Th wow, these women, these women are super innovative. I mean, the unique, brand new, never before heard of inventions that women are coming out with these days truly blows my mind. Now, now listen, fellas, listen. Spraying your perfume all over a hoodie and then going out of your way to return it very two years ago, apparently. Apparently two years ago, such a desperate and obvious play was working. The men didn't figure it out by that time. Everyone was falling for it. What you really have to do, and, and listen, you're, you're really going to want to pay attention on this because no one's ever done this before. Never before seen, life hack, brand new strat. You're going to want to destroy his shit. I know. I know. No one's ever done it. No one has ever been dumped by a guy and destroyed his shit. They'll never see it coming. No, every guy, every guy is fully expecting not only the hoodie to be returned, but to be returned in good condition. So when he sees that you've gone out of your way to destroy it, 
golly gee, is he ever going to be so surprised? You'll really show him, sis. And, and as a result of you doing that, well, well, you already know what happens. He, he has a, a small hoodie. And then, and then you've gotten your revenge. Yeah, he'll, he'll think twice about breaking up with someone now. If, if he doesn't want a small hoodie, he'll never break up with a girl again. Don't worry, ladies. I got you. <laughs> I, dude, dude, it's like she's almost there. Like she understands that men have the maturity and emotional cognizance. Zachary says, I love your brand of sarcasm. Thank you. I'm working on making it a little bit more obvious. In the past, I've had this very flat Slavic sarcasm that just didn't really carry and people just thought I was an asshole. So I'm working on like a sillier brand of sarcasm so it's more digestible. But like, I love that she is so like close enough to understand that men are emotionally cognizant enough to recognize when you're being so desperate that you're trying to initiate feelings by giving them a hoodie back that smells like you. And yet she draws a hard line at men being able to acknowledge that you absolutely fucking shrunk their hoodie on purpose. <laughs> like, most guys, if they break up with you, most guys have already mentally said goodbye to the hoodie. Am I wrong? Like, if, if you dump a girl, are you actually expecting your stuff back? Really? Like, I think most of us, if, if we left something like that at their house, if we're already dumping you, and also, like, let's consider how much it takes for a dude to break up with a girl. We know that this doesn't happen very often. Men either deal with the toxicity until they themselves are dumped, or they feel too guilty doing the dumping, so they just start acting out to trick her into thinking it's her idea, which is not cool. I just, the fact of the matter is that guys just don't often do the breaking up. So, if he's already in a position where he has to dump you, the hoodie is very low on his priorities. He has probably already emotionally surrendered the hoodie. But if you return it to him exponentially shorter and smaller and tighter than it was, he's not assuming positive intent, ma'am. He's not like, I know I just broke up with her, but this was an accident. Like, what do you actually expect to happen from that? Like, it's... I love that she's like, oh, putting putting perfume all over it, that's desperate. But acting out in a spiteful way that's obviously to get a reaction is not desperate. <laughs> like, this is a tale as old as time. You... You don't like what a guy did. You act outside of your character and destroy his stuff. Like, this... We are not new to this. We are true to this. We recognize this pattern. <laughs> Why do people post this and think it's a flex? Oh my god. The girls are exchanging their own little ideas in here. I told my friend about this and she said she'd spray different cologne on it and pretend like she was wearing it around another guy. Watching this thinking, spray it with men's cologne so he thinks he's been replaced. I, do, do they think that like guys are falling for this? Like when has this ever worked? Ever. When has a girl ever been dumped by a dude and then 
they ask to return the hoodie because let's be real he's not like can you please return my hoodie like they're, they're finding a reason to do it they're like okay well i have to come over to, to get my stuff and drop stuff off isn't that always the thing the desperate acts because these are all this is all giving desperate acts they always have to like find some other reason they've forgotten all the stuff like all the stuff that they said didn't even matter to them suddenly matters like it's the end of the world that they'll freaking leave the wedding that they're at to come to your house to get their stuff. But like, ha has it ever happened even one time where a girl is like, all right, here's your stuff back. And he's like, wait a minute. Is this the men's Ralph Lauren 2023 summer collection? I don't wear this to is this, are, is this Brad from the gym? Brad from the gym wears Ralph Lauren summer 2023 collection. Are you seeing Brad from the gym? We, I can't have this. All right. This is this right here. This Ralph Lauren summer collection from 2023 is the last straw. Okay. I, I, I thought that you weren't the one for me until this very moment, but if you can pull a man who can afford the Ralph Lauren summer collection, I know now that you are the one that I need to fight for until the end of times. In fact, I have a ring right now. Will you marry me? It's never happened. <laughs> it's, it's, what, I did that once. She tried beating me up. Uh, I, <laughs> dating Sherlock Holmes be like, <laughs> I, no, dude, I, Probably almost every guy in history, I would say there's a 75-25 ratio of, of all of the men who have ever received their hoodies back that have been sprayed with a men's cologne. 75% of them didn't notice, never noticed, did not once occur to them. They took the hoodie, they threw it onto the laundry chair until it just stopped smelling and then life went on. And the other 25% of them did notice and they laughed and laughed and laughed, called their dad over to see if he can smell it and then they laughed together, texted their friends about it, texted his new girlfriend about it, and they all just laughed and laughed and laughed at your expense. But 0% of those men <laughs> were like, I gotta win her back. <laughs> so goofy, dude. So goofy. All right. No, I'm not going to have time to film. I'm not going to have time to film. So I might as well take this stream into the last half hour before I have to go pick up my daughter from school. We're doing more. Gosh dang it. B buckle up, buttercups, because we're in it for the long haul. Do you guys want to see Miles trick again? Did you see me almost rip that off my head? Hold on. I want to do a Miles trick again. Let me get some treats. I'm going to show you off Miles hug. Here. You guys, if you have not already... Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Heck, share the live for the last half hour if you if you want to enjoy this with some people. Uh, my doggies need more treats. I'll, I'll BRB. I don't need to do the BRB screen. It's fine. You'll live. You can stare at my chair. Maybe Mochi will take it. Miles, Parker. Maybe I can, uh, here, I'll, I'll angle it a bit. Go over here. Miles! I know, I keep tricking you. Come here, buddy. Miles, can. Sit. Shake. Shake. Good boy. And hugs! Hugs! Good, oh, good baby. Good, oh, good boy. Oh, Jack Miles, Miles. And this is how big I am compared to my dog. Oh, Jack, you good baby. Okay. Thank you for dancing with me.
Here's your treat. Okay, you can go now. You are dismissed. Allons-y. Anyway. We just needed some puppy time, that's all. And I needed some slobber on my ears, apparently. <laughs> but thank you all for using your Parker and Miles emotes at this time. <laughs> that's a nice chair. Thank you. I actually, uh, my old job bought this chair during the pandemic when we all had to come work from home. So actually, like, almost all of my office equipment was bought by my last job, which is great, honestly. <laughs> all right. What else do we have on my itinerary? Oh, I thought this one was interesting. I might have to reposition the frame on this because it's a Facebook video. So I might have to reformat the screen, but let's see what we got here. No, we're good. Oh. Turn the volume up. Uh, this is a Charlotte Dobra reaction to this, but I think the whole story was very interesting. So, it's dating this guy. Dating this guy that I thought was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me. He was competing in a triathlon up in Burley, Idaho, and he asked me to come with him to watch him and support him. He told me that he would drive, he would pay for everything, so I didn't even take my wallet. Well, we get up there and the next day he's running a little behind, so he just runs off to go be a part of the triathlon and he- Okay, really quick, I'm so sorry to interrupt the story like this, but it I will never understand women who are like, okay, I'm going on a date, so I'm not going to bring my wallet at all? What? I'm sorry, like, even if I, even when I trust a man, you, you never know, dude. Like, you, you just never know. So, something could come up. Why would you ever put yourself in a position? This has nothing to do with even men and women, but why would you ever put yourself in a position where if you don't have to be, you're making yourself 100% reliant on on someone else if you're a person who is like out in the dating world and you're a woman and you like have these high standards where men have to like pay for you or whatever that's fine but like don't ever put yourself in a position where you just straight up never have money you have to you have to have this is basic survival people that's that's a crazy thing that people do i don't i don't i will never understand that He forgot to tell me where I was supposed to leave his bike for the second part of the triathlon. So I got into his phone, hoping that I would find an email from the triathlon with details about where I could leave his bike. And I didn't find that. But what I did find is that for the entire time he and I had been dating, he had been getting happy massages from workers and using his best friend's name as an alias. Obviously, I panic when I find this out. And I am now stranded in Burley, Idaho, without a car, without my wallet, without anything but the clothes on my back. So what do I do? I have his car somewhere that he'll find it, take the bike to the drop-off spot with his phone with it, with a text message on it from me saying what I'd found. Then I hitched a ride in the back of this really nice lady's truck and she took me to the closest grocery store that she could find so that I could sit in an electric shopping cart in the back of the <laughs> store and bawl my eyes out trying to figure out what the I was going to do. After I'd taken some time to cry and think, I called the only person. Now, before we get into this part, I just want to know, do we agree with her decision to upon finding this out, hide his vehicle, and then ensure that his bike is not where it needs to be at the triathlon. I personally am going to draw my chaotic neutral card and say, I'll allow it. Okay, I, she didn't destroy anything Nothing is in danger. She just, um, hella inconvenienced this man. She, she sent him on the goose chase of his life. And 
in response for to uh that's literally theft i i don't think so i don't think it's theft um she, he gave her permission to drive and park his car they were under no contract that she had to give him the exact location of it I'm sure if, like, a police officer called her and was like, where did you put the car, she would tell them. Um, but as for the the bike thing, he didn't even tell her where to put it, so she's not under the obligation to necessarily leave it at the correct place. She left it at the end of the race. So, essentially, his car is within the area, I'm, I'm assuming. I, if she, like, literally took it to, like, the other side of town, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe she did. If she completely put the car in a spot where, like, she said where he'll never find it. So if that's true, uh, yeah, that's overkill. But if she just made it really hard to find, like, he's he's going to be looking for it for a bit. I, and, and reversing the roles, dude, if, uh, if a guy got cheated on by a girl and he found out while she was at the triathlon and he was like, I parked her car at the way back of the lot and she is not going to be able to do the bike part because her bike's at the end of the race. I would say the same thing. I'd be like, absolutely justified. I'm, I'm a little confused on how the car situation worked. If the car is truly like unfindable to, to a point where like he literally has lost his car, that's too much, too much. Uh, but the bike part, I think that's hilarious. I think it's perfectly fine to refuse to help your boyfriend finish his triathlon after he's cheated on you. And I think it's perfectly fine to refuse to help your girlfriend finish triathlon after she's cheated on you. Absolutely. So we, we've got a little bit of flawed logic on both parts so far. I don't think she at all deserved to be cheated on. And I also think that she needs to be a lot more responsible as an independent grown adult woman who has already been through one marriage like didn't life teach you to stop depending 100% on a man after the first marriage <laughs> and that's again this isn't a man and man and woman thing like if if you're a man who's been divorced from a woman I'm sure you've also learned not to put all of your eggs in one basket necessarily there either and this isn't even saying, like, you can't rely on anybody, but you, you should carry your own money. It, when it comes to basic adult survival, why are you suddenly acting like a baby just because you have a new boyfriend? Is it cheating to get happy ending massages while you're dating someone? Yeah, dude, this isn't Japan, where, where th there's just, like, a culture of brothels not being cheating like it's absolutely cheating to get spanked by someone who's not your significant other when you've agreed on monogamy what are you talking about is it cheating for your girlfriend to suck some other dude's junk oh but there's no penetration are you kidding me <laughs> of course that's cheating that's crazy so how does she get out of this mess that I could think of to call in that time, my ex-husband. I told him what had happened, and four hours later, he was standing in front of that grocery store in Burley, Idaho, ready to take me home. He drove me home all the way to Utah, didn't ask me one question, didn't interrogate me, nothing. He Hold on. Let's do some quick math. Distance from Burley, Idaho to Utah. Six hours and eight minutes. So to reiterate, this woman divorces this man. Don't know who initiated it. Doesn't fully matter. They get a divorce. She moves on. Starts dating her new Chad. He's a bad Chad. Uh, and he, he's getting his, his happy endings, which is a sad ending for her. She trashes his stuff and is left with nothing. And this man has now is now planning to commit 
to 12 and a half hours of driving to bail her out of this. He just let me sit there in silence and cry until we were home and he dropped me off. Six months later, we got yeah. married. Eight years later, we live in this beautiful house together. You know, I knew where you were going with that. I and that ultimately all culminates. Sorry, I didn't show it, but that's okay. You heard the story anyway. So this all culminates in them getting back together. Could you imagine though, your ex-wife calls you and you drive six hours out to her. The situation that she has truly gotten herself into. No, it's not her fault that she got cheated on, but she did get herself full. who travels out of state with no money what grown woman so like she's she's literally displaying childish behavior gets herself into this awful situation he has six hours and then and then doesn't even say anything the whole way back not even a single not even a single line. Do, do you know how like next to impossible that is to not make a single smart ass comment? Like, so do you think he won the triathlon? Or like, so what time do you think he got? Or like any kind of a joke? Like, so I guess this isn't the happy ending you were expecting. Nothing, not a, not a single remark. Do you, do you know how almost impossible that challenge would be? Like, does all that... And then, yeah, I would, I would hope that that would be enough to make you realize that he's a good guy, but am I the only one who doesn't understand why we think that he won in this situation? <laughs> I don't understand what he got out of the situation. It sounds like he just got a bad at committing brat to continue to enable and she won. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know much about this woman other than the fact that she, for some reason, travels crosses multiple state lines and brings nothing. It brings absolutely nothing. <laughs> Bring, carries no money. Is, is just a completely... She, she's basically a dependa. <laughs> I don't know why I'm supposed to be rooting for her in this situation. It sounds like she's really good at making absolute series of bad decisions and that her only saving grace is keeping this small collection of simps that seem to be able to bail her out. But, but why is this a good thing? I want to see some of these comments. Actually, I, I do want to see what Charlotte has to say about the rest of it, and just in case there's more. I'm sorry, but like nobody picks up nobody in a situation like that if it's not leading to something else. We love this for you, babe. Just think, you finding out that disgusting truth about that guy you were seeing led to your marriage the second time around. But like, do you think that this guy honestly thought that he had a chance with her? Probably, which is sad. He probably was like, oh, I'm her backup. I'm in. <laughs> you know, I guess that's true. There's plenty of guys like waiting around in the friend zone for things to fail so they can step up. I guess it finally worked out for one of them. <laughs> Goodness.
Actually, I didn't know that there was more here. I'm curious what this next video is. It's going to be both of our first time watching it because I only saw the first part. I didn't realize there was more. One time back in 2019, when I was made aware of this fake Facebook profile that was using my pictures and my name, but instead of it being Sophie Phelps Sweeney, it was Sophie Ray Sweeney. And this Sophie Ray Sweeney account was in a relationship with this guy named Jacob McGuire who had a mohawk. And there was photoshopped pictures of me with this Jacob McGuire guy and also like sonograms as if I was pregnant. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> that's kind of weird. But like, there's people that make fake profiles of me all the time. You know, I'm just going to report it and block it and move on with my life. And then a couple months later, it's the beginning of 2020. And all of a sudden you are bumped with hundreds of messages on Facebook and Instagram of people being like the skin suit video the FBI the CIA the skin suit what the fuck are y'all talking about so you finally find the video on Facebook and it is a video of this Jacob McGuire guy with his mohawk and this like woman and the girl is claiming that she is the real Sophie but that the real Sophie has actually been put inside of her that the FBI has her inside of a skin suit <laughs> And that the Sophie that everybody sees on social media, on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok is actually an FBI clone of her. And that she's the real Sophie. And the Sophie that's out there on social media is living at her dad's house and riding her horses and shooting her and playing with her dogs and all this other very insane stuff. And it's like a 10 minute long video of Jacob McGuire and this girl claiming that the real Sophie is in the skin suit <laughs> inside of her body and that she's four months pregnant and it's so unhealthy and it's not good for her and that the FBI needs to come and take her out of this skin suit. And you're like, what the f This is weird. And all of the comments are people tagging the FBI in the skin suit and the video is going viral and you're like, this is so what? weird. And then you look the next day and the video is gone, which luckily you screen recorded part of it. So you still have part of it. You're like, man, that was really weird. And then you just move on with your life because what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so then a couple months goes by and it's like peak COVID. It, it's still, it's still going. Oh my God. It's season and you have a friend come and pick you up and take I will say, though, it is weird when, like, something crazy happens to you, but there's nothing you can do about it. Like, have you ever had a one of those near-death situations? This this probably happens to most of us while driving. This is, it's happened to me, like, three different times in my life while driving, where you, like, just straight up almost die. Like, very narrowly avoid death. And that's it. Like, you don't get an award. You don't get, like, a certification. No one comes out to, like, be like, yay, and you didn't go careening off that canyon. Or, like, and that semi didn't hit you and T-bone you. Like, you don't win anything. Your insurance doesn't, like, go down because you managed to avoid dying. You literally just, like, have to... You just have to move on. <laughs> Take you to the tanning bed because your truck is in the shop and when you get to the tanning bed you get a notification on your ring doorbell that somebody is at your front door and you look and you see a guy facing the other way and you're like oh it's probably the mailman who needs like a signature or something no. so you get on there and you're like hi can no. i help you and the guy turns around and no. he has a mohawk and it's jacob Stop. mcguire standing at your front door no. and you're like oh my god this is not oh, good that's like, you weird. Like, call the police and tell them oh to get god. to my house right now this is not good and you answer and you're like uh can i help you and he's like yeah i'm looking for randall swaney and sophie swaney my name is jacob mcguire and you're like um what and he's like i need sophie swaney i need Sophie." no swaney. you absolutely do like, not um, she doesn't live here like you have the wrong address so then he leaves and you're like oh my gosh this is so weird so the police meet you at your house and then you explain to them the whole situation and you show them the video on facebook that you screen recorded you know how you just casually explain to the police that someone has stolen your identity and convinced it, like thousands of people through viral content that you're like an FBI AI generated reptilian in a skin suit? You know those like casual conversations that you have with the police? <laughs> and you see everything else and if y'all want to see that video let me know because i still have it and they're like okay you know we're gonna make a report of this but we can't actually like do anything about it because he didn't actually like violate any laws and you're like man that sucks but at least there's like a paper trail that this happened because this is insane and now he has your address and he knows where you live Whoa. even though you told him that you didn't live there so then you go back inside of your house after the police leave and you check your email and you have an email from a u.s marshal and it's like hi sophie this is u.s marshal so and so um we had a gentleman named jacob mcguire show up at our office today claiming that you were his wife and that you had been kidnapped um you know he seemed like he was in a lot of trouble and basically was like really really mad nah this is where i'm with you this is where the cap comes in ain't no u.s marshal 
emailing you. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Sophie, or to whom it may concern. Uh, are you kidnapped? No. Are you kidding? Yeah, no, this is all cap. I don't even want to listen to any more of this, but I will because I'm in too deep. Y yeah, I... I should have known from the very beginning when this lady was like, people make fake profiles of me all the time that she was like 1000% full of shit, but I'll let her finish. Messed up. Do you know this person? No. Are you okay? Can you just respond to me to let me know if this person is, you know, basically wrong or what's going on because I am worried about you. So you think, oh my gosh, this is Jacob McGuire pretending to be a U.S. Marshal. And then you look it up and you look the guys. You know how like some people, they're such pathological liars and you can tell like you can tell when they say things like that was a ho the whole train clapped moment for you you know what i mean like the the kinds of people who are like oh my god you're never gonna believe this my daughter just my three-year-old daughter just looked up at me in my eyes and said mommy I so desperately want to squash patriarchy and this capitalist hellscape and just make this world a place where trans and non-binary and everybody can can live together in harmony and everybody in the mire who heard her they all just started applauding and in fact the manager actually got on the loudspeaker and said we just want to recognize this brave young open-minded child for for expressing like no that like you can tell it, so many times when these people are like telling these outrageous stories or like making stuff up that like this was a thought that you had like maybe walking into work one day like wouldn't it be cool if this happened but then instead of like leaving it there you decided I'm gonna lie and tell people this happened because I think that this is such a cool story it's like one of those moments but she just took it so much further like she creative writing was her favorite class in high school and you can tell like i bet you anything that she literally like made up a gmail address for this u.s marshal like just to have receipts of this totally real exchange this is <laughs> this is absolute cap <laughs> this lady is just lying through her teeth dude his name up and it turns out he is actually u.s marshal so you're you're like, okay, so then you call them and the U.S. Marshal's office in Little Rock, Arkansas, because you live in Memphis at the time, and you're like, hi, I'm looking for, you know, U.S. Marshal so-and-so, and they're like, oh, he's not here, and you're like, well, my name is Sophie Sweeney, and I just had this guy show up at my house um, claiming that the FBI had kidnapped me looking for me, and I got an email from this U.S. Marshal that he had been there first, so I'm trying to get in touch with him, and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, we will get him in touch with you. So you get off the phone, and he immediately calls you from his cell phone, and he explains that earlier in the day, the guy and the girlfriend from the video drove all the way from Alabama to to I'm gonna guess stay at home mom I that's what I'm gonna guess from this it's giving very let's see if we can look up Sophie Sweeney really quick and, and see what her job is I'm gonna guess stay at home mom there's just something about and this affects a lot of stay at home moms this isn't a shade to stay at home moms but a lot of them do end up um suffering from a lot of like loneliness and isolation and that that really sucks but as a result of that some some of these people who get a little too lonely and bored um they just start doing shit like this <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so that's what it's it's giving Local Yee Yee, degree in gunsmithing, certified master baiter, like, I don't know if she's saying that to be funny. She does seem to be doing some fishing in this. Uh, th a lot of these thumbnails are giving very, there's probably a spicy link somewhere, but I, ca I can't assume um but we're definitely using our body which you know what if you got it flaunt it you know what maybe she's not a stay-at-home mom i don't even see any kids uh but i it's everything that i'm seeing in this quick scroll through is leading me to believe that yeah she's probably the type who got really into q anon conspiracies back in the day too 
I think that's enough out of Sophie Sweeney. Thanks, Charlotte. I'm glad that you suffered through this. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's giving very I believed QAnon back in the day. <laughs> I'm I'm not falling for this bait. Wait, how does the story end? Fine, we'll finish it. Little Rock, Arkansas, and went into the U.S. Marshal's office and was like, hey, my wife has been kidnapped by the FBI and the CIA. I need help. And they're like, okay, like, come sit down with us. Let's figure this out. And I would also believe that she actually was calling the police and actually calling, like, U.S. Marshals to, like, draw attention to herself in hopes of getting on the news or something. I would also believe that. They start talking and asking him, like, hey, when is her birthday? Like, where was she born? How long have y'all been married? And he can't answer any of the questions. Or they're like, hmm, this is weird. So then they go in the back to look up information on him. And when they come back out, he and the girl have left and apparently driven to my house in Memphis. And he's like, you know, I just need you to know this is actually a dangerous situation. This guy, Jacob McGuire, has 27 counts of false imprisonment against him on top of having kidnapping charges Whoa. and um, domestic violence and assault charges against him. And you're like, oh my gosh, what in the world? What happened? He's like, apparently he's a and he thought that his last girlfriend was also a skin suit from the FBI. So he kidnapped her and held her hostage in his house and then her open to prove that she was a skin suit, even though obviously she wasn't. And he got released. And you're like, what? Why would this person be released? Like, <laughs> Skeptical Lauren is skeptical. Jacob McGuire. Houston. Uh, nope, that's a different group of McGuire. Jacob McGuire. That's the top search result. Skin suit. I just feel like if this is true, if there was actually a situation where a guy picked up like kidnapped his girl and cut her open i feel like this would they don't all have news articles i guess but by now you know i'm not seeing anything i'm trying to google this there's, there's a couple Jacob McGuire records that are public facing. Um, this one's just for menacing though, but that's not a false imprisonment charge. So yeah, I'm, this, the cap is still being called for me. What in the world? This is so scary. So they're able to put an APB out for him and find him and he gets pulled over when him and that girl are on the way back to Alabama and they get arrested. And while you're in the process of getting an order of protection against him and and basically charging him with all this stuff, you get a text message on April 1st that he's been released from jail. Why? And you're like, ha, April Fool's, like he's been released. And then it's like, wait, this is not an April Fool's. Who's, he's literally been released and this guy is just running free. How? And is thinks that the FBI has kidnapped me and now he knows where I live and he's going to come and find me and kidnap me and me open. But you don't hear anything about it for months and you're like, okay, maybe everything is cool. And then it's been three years. And then about five days ago, I get a text message from somebody that's like, hey, Jacob McGuire is at it again. And it's a screenshot of Jacob McGuire's Facebook. And it's all of these posts about Sophie. I need you. I need to find you. But instead, this time, instead of me being the skin suit and his <laughs> girlfriend that's been locked up, I am his daughter that the FBI has kidnapped and he's oh, looking for me again. Sense. And okay. you're like, wow. Jacob McGuire is at it again. But like, why are we not keeping this person in jail? All right, well, and that's how it ends. So you want us to believe that your you went through this horrifying, traumatic, stalking experience where U.S. Marshals are emailing you to contact you. And you have had credible reason to believe that your life was at risk from someone who has already kidnapped and cut someone open. And you want us to believe that your natural response to this being so fresh, having occurred just five days prior to this filming, is to just make a silly TikTok video about it? Again, the survival skills here are very low. I feel like this is a situation where, like, Darwinism is just going to have to take care of it. Because if you have a stalker 
And again, the, I'm not I'm not trying to victim blame here. Obviously, if Jacob is real, which he's absolutely not, she's lying about everything. If Jacob Maguire was real, obviously he would be the one at fault for this terroristic behavior. But also if he was real, I would hope amongst all hope that you would not your response to that would not be to continue to aggravate him and and poke the bear on that that you would not be impeding an investigation by putting it in the court of public opinion instead of actually pursuing criminal charges like that that doesn't make any sense there is literally you're e there's only two solutions here. She's either the dumbest victim in the world. She, she, like, she's like, oh man, I'm at a point where I'm almost going to get murdered. Better make a silly video about it. She's either the dumbest person or lying. And luckily, I think it's just the latter. Which actually, there's a lot of stupidity involved in the lie, I guess. But at the same time, is it stupid to make up a lie for attention if it pays your bills. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she's not dumb. Maybe she's just balling. Maybe she's just making that bread and we should support her in her journey. Rest in peace to all the Jacob Maguire slander. <laughs> to all the Jacob Maguires out there just getting toasted over here. <laughs> I, I think that she is the schizophrenic one, honestly. I think that she's the one who's done a little bit of math. <laughs> Continue watching Jacob McGuire. Are you saying there's like a more? I don't think I could stand it. <laughs> Man. That are oh, you guys are still looking into this, huh? Did you, you guys found something? My, my life is in danger. I should make a TikTok. Dude, no. Because seriously, guys, like, I actually, like, for, re in real life, actually did have somebody dox my address, threaten me numerous times, harass the ever-living crap out of me, after being told repeatedly by myself and my husband to leave us and our family the fuck alone, got a restraining order, granted ex parte. This woman tried to fight it, but went absolutely belligerent in the courtroom, causing the judge to absolutely double down on the fact that the restraining order should be put in place. And when it first started going down, when I found out that I had first been doxxed, I didn't make a video about it. But after that, I got pretty private about the whole series of events. And I, I want to say the only reason that I feel even remotely comfortable talking about it now is because it's been like a year, roughly, a uh, year and a half, maybe almost two years. And like, even then, like, this this person is has still been continuing on. Like, I have no, I, no, no reason to believe that they're done with the terrorism against my life just yet. And, like, no, I'm not trying to do things to further antagonize them and make them worse because... As soon as I realized that this person was actually a credible threat to myself, my family, and my children, I did not make a bunch of silly, goofy TikTok videos about it, dude. I bought the most expensive alarm system that we could put on my house, and I got another dog. <laughs> like, that, that's... I'm not saying that, like, all victims behave the same way, but I am saying from my experience... That's definitely not the smartest way that you, you should be responding. Um, same with, like, if you ever see an adult who seems to be 
mistreating their child. What, what a lot of professionals will tell you is the worst thing that you could do is try to intervene or meddle because most often what happens is you're making that situation worse for the child. The child's the one who's going to get it handed to them when they get home and they're going to be like, how dare you get other people involved? You know what I'm saying? So like with these kinds of situations of like, of course you as the victim should have the right to handle it how you want, but realistically if you're actually dealing with crazy you don't antagonize the crazy are you kidding me that that's gonna make your life so much worse dude like i was de i was definitely advised by lawyers like do not poke this bear do not you will be in danger so like i i don't know what legal counsel this woman got but whoever she hired sucks. <laughs> All right. On that note, I best be off to get my kiddo. Um, I've been I've been teasing you guys with um a higher production. Wow, that is some helmet hair right there. A higher production video. Uh, I'm gonna try to film that. If not this evening, perhaps, definitely, definitely sometime this week. Um, so probably no more lives this week while I try to focus on a little bit more high quality long form. But before I get out of here, please, please, please make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, turn on that notification bell so that you can keep helping out my channel. It really helps my channel grow makes it so that I don't have to take on sponsorships and interrupt videos um, with sponsorships if I don't want to. So it really helps a lot, kind of keeps things a little bit on the freer side. Um, but yeah, this has been a super fun live stream as always. Look forward to more videos soon and I will see y'all.